Hi, this is Mohammed Hassan El Garhi, and today I'm going to present my research and paper reconstructing the chronology of Egyptian pre dynastic kings a multi approach analysis. The comprehensive study delves into the historical enigma of Egyptian pre dynastic kings, employing a meticulous multi approach analysis utilizing the archaeological evidence from the Palermo stone and the Torian papyrus. The methodology establishes a novel framework for dating these ancient rulers by amalgamating historical records, mathematical calculations, and climatic context. The paper elucidates the inauguration timelines of key pre-dynastic monarchs. The findings not only shed light on the pre-dynastic king's era, but also foster insights into its alignment with mythological epochs and climatic transitions. The study underscores the significance of diverse validation methods and culminates in a comprehensive chronology of these enigmatic rulers. So let's start with the Torian papyrus right here, uh, where we have, uh, these are the first three columns of the Torian papyrus, where we have on the third column, line number eight right here, which is that one highlighted right here. It mentions that the era of the pre-dynastic kings or the pre-dynastic era was 13,420 years. This could have actually included about 3,000 years gap between the pre-dynastic kings and the dynastic era. This would include the Badarian and the Nakadas era and what we refer to as the Sahara era as well. So this would leave us with about 10,420 years of a total duration of the pre-dynastic kings before the Sahara era and the Badarian and Nakadas era. According to the American Egyptologist James Henry Breasted, he, his hypothesis based on the Palermo stone mentioned that if the upper line of the stone was full, there were possibly some 120 pre-dynastic kings enumerated on the Palermo stone. In that case, the average duration of a pre-dynastic king or queen would have been about 86 years. That's if we divided 10,420 years divided by 120 kings and queens. So the average reign or term of each queen, uh, king or queen would be about 86 years. On the Palermo stone, there is about 53 pre-dynastic kings before the first name that we could identify as King Sika. So as we can see here, that is the first name here that we can identify, King Sika. And if we go here, we can count about 53 names before King Sika. And if we say that the average reign is about 86 years, so that leaves us with a total of 4,558 years. If we multiply 86 by 53 kings, that is from the beginning of the pre-dynastic kings era. So if we want to convert that to a BC date, how would we do it? So if the total duration of the pre-dynastic era is 13,420 years, and the dynastic era was about 3,200 years, then uh, if we add these two numbers, it will give us 16,620 years BC. So the beginning of the pre-dynastic kings era would have been dated as 16,620 BC. This would mean that King Sika's inauguration would have been about 12,062 BC. How did we get this number? This would be 16,620 BC, the beginning of the pre-dynastic kings era, minus 4,000. 558, that's the number that we found out here, uh, which is uh, the inauguration date, the number of years from the beginning of the pre-dynastic era. So that would give us 12,062 BC, and that is the estimated inauguration date of King Sika, which is the first name that we can identify on the Palermo stone. Then if we go on, if we add the years, the number of years based on the average 90, uh, 86 years as a, as a reign or term period of each king, we will get the next one would be King Ayu or Chayu, and, and that would be about 11,976 BC. And then Tiyu would be about 11,890 BC. Uh, Thesh or Tesh would be about 11,804. Neheb would be about 11,718 BC. Waj Aj would be about 11,632. Mehet would be about 11,540.
46. And that's the names, the seven names of the kings that we can identify from the Palermo Stone. Here we go. Sika, Ayu, Urkhayu, Tiyu, Tash, Neheb, Waj, Aj, and Mehet. <clears throat> so if we go to uh, if we go back to the Torian papyrus, uh, there are a total of about sixty kings and queens uh, before of the pre-dynastic era, so before the beginning of the dynastic era. And the first name that we could identify is uh, uh, Ra, King Ra, which is number twelve right here, number twelve on the list. So between Ra. And the beginning of the dynastic era, we have 47 names, right? So if we add 47 kings and queens, so if we want to calculate this period, it would be 7,042 years, which means that the inauguration of King Ra would have been 7,042 years before the beginning of the dynastic era, right? So 47 is the number of the pre-dynastic kings between him and the beginning of the dynastic era, on the Torin's list, and 86 is the average term of the pre-dynastic kings and queens. Uh, and again, we added the 3,000 uh, approximate gap between the pre-dynastic kings era and the beginning of the dynastic era, right? This, uh, these 3,000 years include the Badar Badarian and Nakada's era. So that would mean that King Zra inauguration was approximately 6,378 years from the beginning of the pre-dynastic kings era, uh, which leaves us, if we want to translate that into a BC, that would be about uh, 10,242 BC, right? And then we will do the calculation. Ra would be 10,242 BC. Jeb would be 10,070. Ozir uh, or Ozire, which is known as Osiris. Latinized as Osiris is 9,984, and then we have Set 9,898. Horus would be 9,812. Thoth would be 9,726, and Maed would be 9,640 BC. And we have a king uh, entitled Mina or Minas or Mini. Uh, on the Turin's list, uh, we couldn't identify the exact name, but we could identify the title as Mini. And uh, that, uh, that his inauguration would have been 8,780 uh, BC. Uh, you might have noticed, if you're familiar with the ancient Egyptian civilization, that these guys over here became deities in the dynastic era. And uh, this is a different story. But these are the names of the kings, as we know uh, from the Turin's list. So let's try to validate this approach and uh, or this methodology. And we have actually uh, four ways to validate it. So a second way to validate it is if we go to line number 24 in column number one of the Turin's, uh, of the Turin's list, it mentions the number 7,707. And we have 36 kings and queens on the Turin's list between the beginning of the dynastic era and line 24 on the first column, which would add up to about 3096 years. So if we multiply 36 by uh, 86, which is the average term again. And then we need to add the uh, estimated gap between the pre dynastic kings era and the dynastic era, including the Badarian and Nakadas era. So that would give us 6096 years. So <coughs> uh, if let's now subtract that, we will get. Uh, to what we got from the total number of years of the full pre-dynastic era based on the Turin's papyrus. So that would give us 7,324 years. This number is pretty close to the number 7,707, which is on line 24 of the first column of the papyrus, which is supposedly indicating the date of inauguration of the king or queen on this line right here, 24, calculating it from the date of the beginning of the pre-dynastic king's era. So in all cases, we're basically talking about the same period. Now, a third way uh, to validate it, if we go back to uh, the Turin's list, we have about 60 pre-dynastic kings and queens on the Turin's list, which would add up to a total duration of about 5,160, if we multiply 60 by 86 years again. 
which means that the first king or queen on Turin's list, we cannot identify his or her name, but uh, the first king or queen on the Turin's list would be would have been inaugurated about 8,160, again, adding the 3,000 years gap, which would be about 5,260 uh, years from the beginning of the pre-dynastic kings era. If you want to translate that into a BC date, that would be 11,300 uh, 60 BC. So the first, the first pre-dynastic um, king on the Turin's list uh, inauguration date would have been about 11,360. So now this needs a bit of a focus. Maybe you will need to read it a uh, few times in order to uh, to to fully get the connections and the puzzle here. So King Sika is uh, the first identified name on the Palermo stone is number 54 in a descending order. So from the beginning of the pre-dynastic era, Sika is number 54, okay? The first king on the Turin's list is number 60 in an ascending order, which means he's number 60 uh, from the date of the beginning of the dynastic era, okay? So the estimated number of the total pre-dynastic kings is estimated to be approximately uh, 120 to 130. So the first king on the Turin's list would approximately be number 65 in a descending order. If we have about 130, 120, or 130, so approximately he would be in a descending order number 65. So in an ascending order number 60, and in a descending order he would be number 65. So there would have been approximately 11 kings between Sika and the first king on the Turin's list, approximately, yeah? that would add up to about 946 years gap between them. The estimated date of inauguration of Sika is 12,062. So the inauguration date for the first king on the Turin's list should then be 11,116, which is pretty close to the date that we have estimated earlier, which is 11,360. Yeah. So let's move on to the fourth way to validate this approach, and again, on um, basically comparing the Turin papyrus and the Palermo stone, and we have 11 kings between the first king on the Turin's list and Ra, King Ra here, who, uh, who's number 12 on the list, yeah? And that would be, again, about 946 years, so if the estimated date of inauguration of the first king on the Turin's list is 11,360, then King Ra inauguration date is expected to be about 10,414, which is as well pretty close to the date that we calculated earlier, 10,242. So basically the pieces of the puzzle fit well with four different approaches. And this method indicated that the pre-dynastic kings era started about 16,620 BC. The estimated average term per pre-dynastic king was about 86 years. There is a gap of about 3,000 years between the pre-dynastic king's era and the beginning of the dynastic era. The Badarian and the Nakadas eras appear towards the end of this gap and before the beginning of the dynastic era. We followed four ways to validate these findings based on the archaeological evidence from the Turin's list and the Palermo stone. So this would be the list right here, starting from King Sika, which is the first name that we could identify on the Palermo stone, 12,000. And 62, and the list goes on as per our approach. And we will see the first uh, king on the Turin's list would be about 11,360. And then uh, King Ra would be about 10,242. And the list goes on until the first king, which is entitled Mini or Minus on the Turin's list. That's about 8,780 BC. And it's important to note that this king is not the Mini or the Minus of the dynastic era because the mini or the menace of the dynastic era Narmer or Narmer also appears on the Turin's list with the beginning of the dynastic era and then after him we can see the kings that we are familiar with from the dynastic era. So according to historians including Manitou and Isabius of Caesarea they also uh, they also did their estimates about the ancient the deep ancient egyptian history the pre-dynastic ancient egyptian history 
And it goes almost like that. They dated back to about um, about 33,000 from 28 to 33,000 before the dynastic era, before King uh, Minas Narmer or Na'irmer. And if we add the dynastic era, that would add up to about 36,000 years. So the estimated timeline of this pre-dynastic period, according to these historians, would go like this. So from 3,300, right before the dynastic era, to about 5,000 BC, that's the Badarian and the Nakada era. From 5,000 to 10,000, that's an unknown era for them. From 10,000 to 15,000 BC, that's what they call Shamsu Hur, or the followers of Hur, and the pre-dynastic kings. From 15,000 to 17,000 BC, that they call it the demigods era. And from 17,000 to 30,000 BC, that's called the gods era. So the proposed list and dates of the pre-dynastic kings do come during the Shemsu Hur and the pre-dynastic kings era, as estimated by Manitou and other historians. This is also aligned with the climatic conditions uh, that we will mention right now, that between the area, uh, the era, the period of 5,300 and 8,500 people left the Nile Valley and lived in the Egyptian Western desert. This is the period when the ancient Egyptians of the pre-dynastic era uh, which we call them IPs, had to move to the Egyptian Western uh, Desert to escape the hypothesized natural disaster that wiped out the pre-dynastic kings era. This is aligned as well with the estimated 3,000 years gap mentioned earlier. So uh, according to the climatic conditions or a timeline of Sahara, the Egyptian Western Desert, it goes like this. So 20,000 to 8,500 BCE, the Western Desert in Egypt or the Sahara was devoid of any human occupation outside the Nile Valley and extended 250 miles further south than it does today. So between 8,500 and 7,000 BC, monsoon rain be begins sweeping into the Sahara, transforming the region into a habitable area swiftly settled by Nile Valley dwellers between 7,000 to 5,300 continued rain, vegetation, growth, and animal migration that's in the Sahara area or West Egyptian Western Desert. And then between 5,000 to uh, 300 to 3,500 BCE, again, uh, people started moving back uh, to move to remaining ha habitable niches in the Sudanese Sahara, the end of the rains and return of desert conditions throughout the Sahara after 5,500 years with the population returned to the Nile Valley and the beginning of the Badarian and the uh, Nakada period and the dynastic period. So that's, that fits well as well with our uh, hypothesis and with the dates that we mentioned. So to conclude here, the conclusion is that uh, the intricate exploration of the Egyptian pre-dynastic kings chronology presents a multifaceted approach to deciphering the historical tapestry of early Egypt by ingeniously amalgamating archaeological artifacts, mathematical rigor, and climatic context, this study offers a compelling reconstruction of these ancient rulers' brains. The alignment of multiple validation methods reaffirms the robustness of the proposed chronology and underscores the interplay between historical records, mythological epochs, and natural transitions. Thank you.